What's up guys? So y'all have been asking the boys of Throttle to get me on camera more so I'm gonna go ahead and start today with a little installation of a set of KW version 3 coilovers on my fiance Courtney's new BMW 3 Series. 2015 328 so it's a single turbo setup and uh, yeah it gets along pretty good it's very tidy and she's super pumped. Let's introduce her. Hi Courtney. So this is my fiance Courtney. These are her new coilovers that KW was gracious enough to send our way for this car. Thanks KW. So let's go ahead and get these unboxed. Hey, that's a lot of purple and yellow. Wow, the packaging is extraordinary. We got a little tool kit here with what looks like a Gardo. Cool. What else we got in here, baby? Oh. Looks like some rubber perch mounts. I'm guessing that is our top for the rear spring. But we'll get into that in a minute when we get the instructions out. So let's lay these out real nice and see what we got all together here. I have a razor blade in my apron. Some adjustable mounts here as well so we'll have to uh, take a look at the instructions and see what instructions uh. <laughs> so apparently KW does not send instructions with this kit it must be that self-explanatory that you don't need them Courtney's gonna go ahead and get the wheels and tires off this utilizing our half-inch impact gun and a 17 millimeter socket We'll try to update you guys with what tools are necessary to do this job as we go along, so hang in there. Spoke too soon, got in here and opened up the tool kit and lo and behold, inside the tool kit is an instruction manual, which is pretty cool because we didn't think we got one. So inside this kit, oh, they've included some decals, which will stick on our toolbox and instructions, hopefully they're in English cranking as soon as Courtney gets these wheels off. A little trick I like to do when I take the lug nuts off is I'll just thread them actually back on the hub. Just a couple turns to uh, just so you don't kick them across the shop floor and lose them which it appears that uh, one of them has gotten kicked across the floor so I'll have to find that in a second but uh, yep this is a good trick. Takes a few seconds, but it could save you a bit of time have, if you kick them across the floor and gotta go looking for them. So, oh, there it is, got it. Well, we had a bit of a false start. We went ahead and pulled the wheels and tires off, and then after thinking about it for a moment, I realized that I forgot to take a measurement of the stock suspension height. So we went ahead and just popped the wheels back on. We're gonna go ahead and lower down the quick jacks. Um, put the car on the ground real quick and go ahead and take a measurement of the actual ride height before we start. You know, once we lower the car with the coilovers, where we're at and how much we've actually lowered the car. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take a measurement from the floor to the center of the wheel arch directly through the center of the wheel. This will give us a good starting point. So right now we're seeing about 20, looks like 27 and 7 eighths. So what I use the green tape for is just so that I don't have to try to remember that. So put 27 and 7 eighths. That gives us a benchmark to uh, when we set up the coilovers, you can see how much we've lowered the car. You can actually cheat a little bit and uh, also measure your wheel gap while you're here. It looks like the top of the tire to the bottom of the wheel arch is about two and a half inches. So we're gonna wanna close that up quite a bit. This one in the rear is 27 and let's say three quarter. So it appears that the rear is actually lower than the front, but it's actually not the case. It's actually the wheel arch that's cut out on the fender is actually higher in the front. So before we get started, I like to take a look in here and just kind of see what we're dealing with. Um, this car's got about 35,000 miles on it. So 
there's definitely some sign of use. Um, it's a little filthy in here, so we'll probably clean up a little bit of that while we're doing this job. But it's really important, especially on these German cars, to take a look and see if there's any height sensors installed. Um, a lot of times height sensors are used for headlight adjustment on the fly as you're going up hills and down hills and stuff. It'll help adjust your headlights because it knows where the right height of the vehicle's at. A lot of times they're in the rear. So what you're looking for is like a little, I think it's a potentiometer with a little arm on it. You'll want to disconnect that arm if your car has it because when you pop your strut out, it allows the, the um, suspension to go to full droop and a lot of times that'll crack the arm for the height adjustment. So we're all clear. We can go ahead and start pulling this apart. It is a five bolt assembly, one, two, three, four, five, and then one bolt for the strut bar. So we'll have to pull that off as well. And then we'll move on to the bottom. All right, so just got the bottom, the hub assembly off of the strut. We're gonna go ahead and hoist the strut out of here. One key thing that you'll need to remember is to undo all these sensors from the, the mounts on the frame. Because if not, you'll pull too much tension on them and rip them right out. It's your wheel speed sensor and ABS sensors and stuff. So be very careful with your brake lines and stuff with this hanging. This is all very heavy. Um, but it is meant to fold open like this so you can pull the strut out. So here's a little comparison of what we've taken out and what we're putting in. These have a fancy little collar on them right here to uh, to put into the factory hub. We're gonna need to poach the top mount off of the factory strut to put on here. This comes with new hardware. Should be pretty straightforward. It's like a, it's got an Allen key center and like a 17 mil on top. And uh, so we'll hold it with an Allen key, spin that nut off. This should come off. Not sure if this is under that much preload. I might just uh, put a little tension on it with a spring compressor or uh, the old school zip tie trick. See if we can uh, get this off pretty easy. This is the factory dust cover. Um, the KW coilovers require the use of this upper uh, portion of the dust cover. This part is no longer needed, so they're requiring you to cut this off at the first bellow. Um, I assume it's for the isolation, the rubber isolation of this between the spring and our um, OEM upper mount. So this was just gonna go in there to probably eliminate any squeaking or rubbing that's gonna happen between the spring and the top of the factory perch. We do need a spring compressor to actually put these coilovers back together because they do utilize the OEM top hat as I've shown you. So I had to send Miss Courtney out to a late night auto zone run to purchase a, I guess, a spring compressor. I've never used one before. I've never needed one. This is a first rip me and when she gets back we can knock out both of the fronts i'm even going to try to get onto the backs while she's gone just to try to get this done a little quicker so i'll film as much as i can hang in there all right well courtney's out getting the spring compressor uh, i'm going to go ahead and get started on the rears got the fronts out already so with her being gone getting the tools that we need to finish the job i just thought it'd be nice for me to get a jump on getting these out uh, that way when she gets back we can go ahead and toss everything back together i'm gonna make her do most of that work you got there Got it. Oh, spring compressor and more importantly, Chick-fil-A. Oh, hey, shit. nice. Got it. This is one thing that always screws me up. BMW, BMW has these inserts, the center of the spring. And if you try to put your kit in with this, doesn't work, so don't forget to take this out. Stock suspension's out of the car. Now we can start focusing on putting the new stuff back in. So this part should just sit right up inside the chassis. The chassis. Oh yeah, I like that. So it has this nice little nub on here. And it sits right in the recess on the chassis so that keeps the spring centered. It's pretty sick. Shoot it, shoot it towards the Porsche. <laughs> there it goes. It's coming. Keep going. Get ready to get your right arm out of the way in case it springs off. 
Yep. Got it. All right, fitting the front right strut. You gotta give her a little bit. <laughs> so it's important to get that QA lined up. All righty, got it all seated in the hub. And now we're gonna slip it past the fender here and up into place. So now we will use a jack. Can you hold this right here? Hold that steady. And use a jack to just. Okay, we're gonna get it close because there's a couple keyways on the top that have to line up. So the sway bar mount here and then there's a nipple here and a nipple here that have to line up. So right about there. If you can hold it steady there, it. I'll work the jack with my foot. Getting there. Slide it right up into place. Boom. And sway bar mount is aligned. So that's good. You can actually go ahead and uh, just toss that sway bar. Okay. Just to keep that aligned for now. Then we can even hang a few of these. Just finger tight. That way if we let the jack down we don't lose our alignment. On the second coil over just uh, spinning this down by hand. It's much quicker than with the tool. That's the luxury of a nice new coilover. There's no grit and grime in the threads. So it goes down pretty nice. So on the other side we went down and left about an inch and a half of threads. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same on this side. About a quarter inch more to go. And these will be matching left to right. Once we get the height dialed in we just get an Allen key and tighten that down. And that locks it into place. It's a little off. Kind of got it in there. Just might want to give it a little smack. Do be real careful when you do stuff like this. We smack a bolt to get it through because the likelihood is that it's caught up on the threads a little bit. So you got to be pretty delicate with what you do. You don't want to mess the threads up on the bolt. You're better off spending a little bit more time to get it aligned than just jamming it through. I can feel the, feels like the arm is a little too high. So maybe if I let the jack down, it'll go. So on this, we're actually gonna push this arm down and let it pivot on the, the rear mount. And um, we'll push it up and down as we need to to get all these springs located in here. And on the other side, I adjusted the the adjustable portion to show three threads. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that same adjustment on this side. Main spring, the helper spring is already in place. The function of this helper spring isn't for spring rate. It's actually to keep tension on this spring so that when your suspension decompresses over hills and stuff, that this spring doesn't flop around when the suspension is uh, decompressed. So we noticed when we were taking these wheels off, they were a little sticky coming off. So we're gonna go ahead and take some scotch brake to the hub bore, get the surface rust off. What happens is condensation gets in there, causes corrosion, and it causes your wheels to stick to the, to the hub. Uh, also, now is a good time to throw a little bit of anti-seize on your lug nuts. This is a Loctite brand heavy duty anti-seize. Um, you can use anything you got, but when you got the stuff apart, it's always a good idea to, to do this. So it's so a good way to prevent this from getting bad again. It's just to put a little bit of light, like PB Blaster, WD-40, a little bit of light oil on there. Um, that'll stop it from, that's maybe a little excessive, but uh, it'll stop it from corroding again. All right, just got the car all buttoned up. Um, Courtney and I just lowered it down to the ground. And it's actually pretty aggressive. Um, I think it looks pretty killer myself, but I have a feeling for daily activities, it's probably gonna need to come up. So we've effectively lowered the car. Holy cow. We've literally lowered the car three inches. In the rear was 28, and we're now at 25 and 3 eighths. So we've gone down 
two and five eighths in the rear, which is probably good. I think the rear is actually, I think the rear actually looks pretty good. Knowing that we're gonna put aftermarket wheels on this car very soon, they're gonna have a much more aggressive offset uh, and a little bit of a stretch tire. I think this will actually be a really good fitment. So um, I think we're gonna drive it home like this and see if there's any rubbing. All right, boys, it's the next day. Courtney's suspension turned out really good. We actually, um, in my haste, got the car done, got it on the ground, and actually nailed the ride height first try, which is pretty much unheard of, and usually you have to go back a couple times and make adjustments, but we put the car on the ground, as you guys saw. Courtney drove it off, we got it on the freeway, and she really enjoyed the ride quality straight out of the box. Um, the ride height is pretty low, uh, and it's gonna settle. So we're probably gonna have to raise the car up about a half an inch front and rear. Um, we do have a set of wheels and tires waiting for the car, so um, those will probably go on later this week. And I think that's gonna also mean that we're probably gonna have to make some ride height adjustments as well uh, because the OD on those is just a little bit bigger. So, which means that it's gonna be even tighter. Anyway, we're super happy with the KW V3s. They have double adjustability so we can um, make it comfortable for her on a daily drive uh, with the rebound and compression adjustment. And uh, so we want to thank Chris over at KW Suspensions for uh, looking after us on those. We really appreciate it. We've had great luck with their product in the past. Thanks to them, A1 product, awesome service. Leave me some comments below. We uh, actually have some wheels in mind picked out for the car already. Um, Courtney is a spokes model for Falcon Tire, so we will be working with Falcon Tire to get tires for the car. Um, they should already be on the way, which is pretty exciting. Um, but yeah, let me know what wheels you think we should put on this thing. Thanks again for tuning in today. Um, I hope you guys like this video. We're going to start doing more of this stuff. In fact, I'm about to get in the truck with TJ with an empty trailer to go look at another car that uh, could potentially be our next project. Subscribe to our channel if you don't already because I'm going to be doing a video a week on the Throttle channel. Make sure you're getting those notifications every day. It's going to be exciting. We've got a bunch of cool things planned.